Welcome to episode 541 of South Cedo Paranormal. And tonight I'm sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is Salcedo Paranormal dot podbean dot com that's s a l s i d o paranormal dot podbean dot com always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences whether they're your own or from others that you trust happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them thank you all for listening whether you are here for the live streams on Discord, or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or if you listen on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting, there you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble, uh, excuse me, I can't talk, Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing these shows and putting them up on the station as you hear them with the music at the beginning and end of every episode there. Uh, if you'd like to help the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can also find extra True Paranormal Stories from the Web episodes, one per month, over on Amazon, and uh, not Amazon, on the uh, Patreon page. And um, the any, anyone that signs up for any of the paid membership levels will get those episodes. You can also find books I've written, uh, paranormal fiction and nonfiction, over on Amazon. And or you can also make one-time donations to the show through PayPal, uh, as there are expenses in making these shows. Uh, help is never expected, but I was appreciated. Um, as like I said, there are expenses in these, making these shows, from equipment to research materials to travel expenses in some cases. So, um, and again, just uh, for an example, I recently had to replace my computer. So these things... You, the equipment usually lasts for a while, but when they break, um, it's a a sudden bill that you have to uh, pay to get things going again for the show. So, um, anyway, I think that covers all of that. Um, I want to thank everyone that was here in Discord last weekend. Um, those of you that maybe listen to the live uh, Discord stream right now or that listen to these upcoming episodes on the podcast or YouTube feeds. Uh, I greatly appreciate you listening at all, especially the second time around. As um, everyone that was here last weekend, uh, last Saturday night, um, they heard basically the next four episodes. But those recordings did not come out. They basically were silent, so that is why I am redoing those episodes. So um, just want to thank everyone that... Is is here whenever able they're able and uh, and then especially in cases like that where you you may hear some things over again so but uh, I think that covers everything again today I'm covering true paranormal stories from the web and um, so that's the plan for this episode so let me get to the file here I'm just checking on everything and it looks like everything is going. Which is good. Uh, it says something about. Um, hmm, okay. Let me see here. Hopefully it's still recording. I guess I'll find out. <laughs> um, but anyway. I guess I'll keep going here and see how it goes. Um, Alright. Let me get to the file here. And go from there. Um, okay, there it is. So, uh, this is, this first uh, account says, the story says, this happened in 2008 in Montana. I was working as a pizza delivery driver for my second job. 
it was the end of the night, and we were closing. The manager and another driver and I were outside, smoking, and we were all talking. We suddenly noticed something in the sky, about 40 to 50 feet above us. The object was transparent, about the size of a small car. The shape of the object was hard to determine, though it seemed to be a square. It flew over us at a slow speed before disappearing completely. My manager asked us if we had seen it, and we both said that we had. Was it a physical craft or something else? And that's where that one ends. Um, again, those kinds of sightings, especially when there's multiple people, are always amazing. Um, a little bit harder to sort of maybe write it off, even though I think that individual experiences are just as important. But, um, but yeah, amazing account encounter there. Um, 40 to 50 feet is pretty low compared to, from what I've heard and read, compared to what most um, large ships, oh, uh, ships, uh, I think, I'm thinking of a post I saw on, um, online today about spaceships, basically. But um, any kind of plane, flying objects, planes or whatever, it's pretty low for them to be. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe drone is a possibility, but I've never heard of a drone that is transparent. At least not yet, anyway. Uh, the square shape is also sort of unique in a way, I think. I've heard of more like rectangular craft, um, although I feel like I've heard those as usually being massive, uh, just giant objects in the sky. And uh, so, yeah, the square, the square aspect is different, I think, in a way. Similar, but still a little bit different. And, um, yeah, I wonder, again, how did it disappear? How was it able to be transparent? Just like the writer there says, was it a craft or was it something else? And um, it's hard to say, but neat encounter there. And I think there's all kinds of these things, uh, these sightings people have experienced all the time. And I think only so many of them actually ever get reported so uh or recorded in any way so not even necessarily reported to a major organization but just put down online somewhere like the ones i find for these shows so um th that covers that one so let's see here let's get to the next story here story here this one says i was on my cell phone one night uh, when something strange happened, I had my I had left my bedroom window open, as I usually do. I no I noticed a dark figure in my peripheral vision. Looking at the figure, I saw it, it throw a stone at me. Angry at what was either a prank or a break in, I quickly got up and headed outside. But there was no one around. And I live in a closed complex of residences. I checked the security cameras with the security guards, but found no evidence of anyone near the window or in the hallways. What did I see? And that's where that one ends. Um, I wonder, but with that one, do they still have the stone? Did they actually see anything land or hear anything land? Um, if not, I wonder if it was some kind of a crossover between dimensions or other times. Um, I always wonder too, with all these, with these accounts of experiences, how often do people, do regular people that are writing in these experiences, how often are they sort of part of the cause of the activity? 
like in this case here, what if this figure, this shadow figure, was a regular person in some other universe or level of reality or time, and suddenly, suddenly someone appears in the room that maybe belongs to the shadow figure, what, what appears to be the shadow figure, and startles them, and so they reach for a rock and throw it sort of as a self-defense thing. Um, so I don't know for sure on that, but I think that's always a good option or possibility to consider is that, uh, I mean, obviously there are negative forces out there, just like they're positive or neutral, but I wonder how often these things, these experiences people have, it's not just the person writing in to that has an experience, it is whoever else or whatever else is also involved in the whole thing. Uh, maybe they had an experience they couldn't explain. So I think it's just an important thing to consider and keep in mind when, um, when examining these accounts of experiences. So moving on to the next story here. Uh, let's see here. Okay. This one says, my wife and I had just returned from a convention she had been attending all day. She went to talk to the kids in their rooms, and I stayed in the living room. I heard, uh, I heard four quiet, quick knocks on the front door, resembling a friend's gentle knock. I assumed it was a neighbor and mentioned it to my wife as she came back into the living room. She checked through the peephole in the door, but saw nothing. I also realized there was no alert from the video doorbell. I went outside, but didn't find anyone, human, animal, or otherwise. I also didn't sense anything in the area, either. And that's where that one ends. Um, that last sentence there, to me, I think is um, maybe telling, possibly. Is that indicating that this person that wrote in this account of an experience, have they had experiences before to where they can kind of sort of sense energies or feel things that are around them? Uh, that's what it seems to imply to me, but I could be wrong on that. And uh, I wonder how many people, I mean, it sounds like the writer there, maybe their wife heard it too, I'm not sure. But again, no evidence on the cameras. Again, no, the cameras, there, there are cameras there with the p potential to catch anyone that was there physically that was a regular person. But nothing was nothing was found so and yet you have if you want to look up online um doorbell camera sightings ufo sightings ghost sightings they are um you can find them i'm sure all over the place i when i used to do more of a news show kind of a thing which i liked at the time but i'm kind of over now i don't it's not as interesting to me but when i was doing those shows there were, it seemed like every every week, I would usually do at least one of those news shows per week. It seemed like almost every week there was a report, a news article about someone's uh, sighting, possible sighting through a camera, a doorbell camera, of something odd. So, but again... It seems like so many in so many cases, the unexplained or the paranormal or supernatural interacts with cameras in different ways. Uh, sometimes things appear on cameras that people don't see. Sometimes people see things on cameras that they don't see with their own eyes. Sometimes different types of vision, of uh, camera vision or camera types there, um, they will, you will see, or any kind of like a, binoculars or any kind of a viewing technology people i've heard of stories of this before too people will see um figures on let's say 
military thermal uh, goggles or visors or whatever. But when they look, there's no one there. Or they'll be the opposite. They'll see something. They'll see a figure or some kind of creature or whatever. And they'll look through their other sort of method or their other filters, whether it's um, forward-looking infrared or night vision, whatever, and they won't see whatever it is they're seeing with their own eyes. Or again, any variation or combination of those things. People will have sightings where whatever they're seeing is only visible in certain ways. So um, just a neat... Uh, thing to point out there I think is important with all these sightings and uh, so yeah that's that's if you look up um, online military paranormal experiences you can find all kinds of podcasts over the years have sort of done uh, have done individual like episode episodes on that topic of people involved with either military or police or first responders of any kind who have experiences they can't explain. So, uh, it's definitely a thing. I haven't done any shows directly on that yet, just because that has been done so much. And I sort of like to share the stories as I find them, of experiences as I find them. Let them let the order be what it is. And, um, and some of those stories will pop up on the show, too, sometimes. On this show. From... Um, medical professionals or, again, military, whatever. Uh, all kinds of those sightings are are there. Uh, um, so, and they keep coming out every so often. So, anyway, I don't know why I got off in the... I guess it was the camera. So, uh, but yeah, so that's that story there. I think I'll get to one more here. And then we'll, uh, we'll end the episode and move on to the next one after that. But let me get to one more account here. Uh, let me see. Okay. This one says, my mom had a... Oh, am I skipping one? Let's see here. I'm just checking. Okay. Got that one. All right. So um, moving on to the next account here. This one says, my mom had a dream shortly after her grandma's passing. It took place in the family's summer house, where we go and visit sometimes. My mom walked into the living room and saw her grandma sitting in a chair. My mom asked her grandma, my mom asked her grandma, sorry, uh, why she was there. Her grandma responded, expressing difficulty. Uh, uh, let's just um, and um, and explain. Let me see here. That's weird. I think there's a problem here in this uh, this uh, thing here. I'm missing a part of a story. That's not good. <sighs> Sorry about that, people. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I don't know why that cut off like that. So, I apologize. Let's move on, move on to the next one here. Uh, and we'll just, um, see what I can do. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let's go to this next one here. I don't know why that, why that story got messed up. So, anyway, it's always something. But, we'll get through. This next one says, I used to have a vich vintage, can't talk, vintage tape deck from the 70s when I was about five years old. The tape deck operated either with batteries or by being plugged in. One day I noticed that the tape deck was playing without being plugged in or having batteries. I told my mother, who didn't initially believe me. The next day, I showed her the tape deck and pressed play on the tape to show her 
what was happening. My mother didn't know what to say. I continued using the tape deck for the rest of the day, and then put it down on the stair landing where I usually listened to it before going to bed. The next day when I looked for the tape deck, I couldn't find it. I asked my mother about it, and she said I must have lost it. I knew where I had left the, left the tape deck, so this didn't make any sense. Now I think that she was freaked out by the tape deck and got rid of it after I went to bed. So that's the end of that one. Um, and it sounds like some force or entity may have been manipulating, manipulating that tape deck, uh, making it play, giving it power to play when there was no other source of power. The only thing I wonder about with that is, and I don't know if this is ever a case with, with devices, could it have two battery compartments um, where the, the writer, especially back as a kid, was only aware of one of them and didn't know about the other? Maybe. I don't know. Seems unlikely, but possible. And so um, there were batteries in it, just not in the place that they expected. But just considering the other uh, paranormal possibilities there. That is something that you, you can you find once in a while when looking up these experiences. People will claim that their devices, whether it's um, it is TVs or anything really, any any kind of device, lamps, um, just any kind of electronic devices. Sometimes when they're not plugged in, and there's no batteries in them. Uh, they'll be they'll start going they'll start turning on and or turning off and I have heard that sometimes that can be explained by various uh, electromagnetic magnetic fields that sort of um, can be um, changed or can can change on their own uh, to cause devices to act up like that but now with this account here the writer is saying that they were able to press the button on the device to indicate when they wanted to turn on, and it would turn on. It doesn't sound like there was anything going on that the writer there didn't experience with that tape deck. So, uh, so that to me seems like maybe it might be some other intelligence making it possible for that tape deck to still work somehow. Uh, and I, I'm, I, I imagine maybe the mother did get rid of it if it was freaking her out and um, maybe pre freaking out their child. Didn't seem like that the, the writer there as a child was too worried about it. But still, if it's freaking out anyone else, like the mother, then I can understand trying to get rid of it um, or getting rid of it. So, so yeah, that's the end of that one. Uh, I will find the rest of that other story I started and, and include that in the next uh, True Paranormal Stories on the Web episode. Uh, I don't know why, why that got cut off halfway, so, but um, I'll find it again. And uh, it, is, it is a good one. It's, it's one we talked about last week when I did the stream that never got recorded. So thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all in the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.